Hello. I'm going to be doing a little bit of a different video today. It's going to be a book review of Robert T. Kiyosaki's Cash Flow Quadrant. He had written another book before. It was called uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It was a very important book and very influential. And I decided to get this one because I appreciate him and what he's done in his life. And I would like to replicate some of that if possible. Now, this book is very well written and it mostly strives upon the mindset of a person right so his whole take from this or your whole take from this would be how to change your mindset to go from where you start to where you want to be right so as you can see the cash flow quadrant you have these four quadrants here right e b and then you have i and uh, S, right? Now, what it is, the whole point of the story is that he's categorizing people into these sections, right? So E would be employee, S is small business, B is big business, and I is the investor, right? So in order for you to become a rich and wealthy person, you would want to go from the left side to the right side, right? So, you're going to go from being an employee who's dependent on wages and a small business person, and you want to go and become a big business person and an investor, right? It's pretty simple. However, what he points out is very important based on people's perspectives in their minds, which is most of the people who are employees are people who have a mindset of security. Whereas people who want to become more rich, they have a mindset of risk, which is a very important thing to think about. So he points this out very thoroughly throughout his book. It's very interesting, all the stories that he talks about, which is uh, people's dependence upon wages and earning from others rather than earning for themselves. So instead of going out to earn money for your own sake, you earn it on the back of somebody else who is in control of you, right? He told about how after a certain generation around the baby boomers time, that there were people who only wanted security and assuredness, right? And how that led to a self-perpetuating cycle as these people and their inability to understand the tax codes would end up in bad financial situations because they wouldn't buy assets, which is something that an investor would do or a big business person would do, right? So if you were an employee, you would end up in a worse financial position, but you would become addicted to the medicine, which was a consistent wage or salary coming in after a such and such period, right? And as your financial situation got worse, you would end up continuously cycling down and becoming further and further addicted to the wage, which is almost as it, as it would seem some kind of narcotic, right? And as this continues, you could see that being an employee is not a way for you to become a wealthy individual and we also moved on to the s which is small business which is can be very successful they can be very uh very wealthy as well however they have one particular weakness about them which is they are small businesses and because of that they create a system which is themselves they are the system which makes their business work in order for their business to work they work which oftentimes leads them to having no time in their lives no uh, time for their family they have to constantly be working on every single issue there oftentimes these people are perfectionists which I would know in my personal life as people around me create businesses and small businesses that is 
where they are the system. They are the business system. They run it, and without them, their business does not run. Therefore, they sacrifice themselves to their business, and their business is them. This costs them immensely in terms of time and energy. Though it is not it is not necessarily a bad thing to have these things, it can also be a very good thing, which uh, Robert also points out in his book, which is that you do not want someone who is not a perfectionist or small business minded, right? Think perfectionist, small business, and to be the ones who are going to do your teeth. You want a perfectionist. You want a small business person to do that. You want somebody who's going to be very particular about what they do, which is you want to hire these people to work for you in services, right? And that'll lead me to the B, which is big business, right? Now, the big business are people who create business systems that are separate from themselves. And Robert even brings this up later, which is in order for you to to uh, be successful, you should create a business system, which no matter how long you are out of the business system, still provides you with cash flow, which is very, very interesting to me. And I very much appreciated that. It was very, um, very informative, in fact. And in order for you to continue further, the big business would have to go and be more and more independent from you. It would be able to run without you, but still belong to you. So in order for these people who wanted to become very successful, they create business systems and then they can sell them or keep them. And it would constantly build on wealth for them, whether they did anything or not. So as you continued on the left side, which is the employees and the small businesses, those people would end up having less and less time. And on the right side, you would end up having more and more time as you became more and more su successful. Now, there's the last part, which is the I for investor. The investors are very simple but they also deal with a lot of risk. These people have to put in a certain level of risk if they were to do nothing else uh, to end up getting a positive cash flow, which could be from anything from real estate, uh, stocks, bonds, anything that could possibly bring them a return, which is very good. So in order for you to become wealthy, in the eyes of Robert, you would need to be able to be a B, big business. You would have to create a business system which does not depend on you. This would require other people, right? There's another part in the book where he talks about why would I have to worry? Essentially, he says, why would I have to worry about a problem that I'm not smart enough for or strong enough for or anything? when I could hire somebody else to be able to make the difference for me. That's where you would hire small business people to be perfectionists for you, or you would hire employees, right? And then in order to do that, you would have to create a big system which would help a lot of people. Very nice. And for the big business in order to, for it to survive, it would have to function as an eye as well, to invest in other things that would uh, help it continue to grow or into things that would help it. And I found this very insightful and very interesting. And I think that uh, at least for the first half of the book, it's mostly about mindset rather than it is about any uh, particular um specifics based on what it is that he's talking about in the first uh first three chapters he's just talking about terminology for the most part 
which is to explain the different uh, patterns of what's going on here with the uh, quadratic formula or the quadratic uh, the cash flow quadrant and but there is also a very interesting thing that he does here which is to talk about certain groups and how they choose to spend their money which is shown right here right this well this would be a rich person they would take their assets and it would go straight to their income right now that is very different from something like a poor individual or even a middle class individual which would end up spending quite a lot of money in other ways let's see something more akin to this which is they get their job right which flows toward directly towards their income then they put the rest of their money through their expenses down to their liabilities and then whatever whatever is left over their expenses and it's out of their lives from that point which is what a lot of people do and i think that it's very important that we think about these things so we can save ourselves from a lot of financial issues in order to gain more for ourselves we should be thinking about assets rather than uh spending all of our money through our income first then to our expenses then liabilities then expenses it's like draining yourself of every at last ounce of what you have right versus for now getting what you have from your income into assets and then eventually that'll reciprocate i know for myself i i invest quite a lot of money into uh, the stock market and different currencies as a way to free myself up in the future to make money and if anybody's interested let me know and I could talk more about that sort of thing yeah. and for the most part the book is very nicely structured I think that his first book the rich dad poor dad was a lot more uh, interesting because it had a uh, narrative structure to it this has a lot less of that sort of thing it's a lot more of a uh, informative um informative structure there's lots of different examples lots of different um people that he talks about but it's not it's not beat it out as a story like rich dad poor dad was and uh for that being said i very much recommend this book it made a lot of sense to me. I thought that it was uh, very informative. And I just gave you the key points towards the book. But there's a lot more in here that I think that you would really like. Now, with all that being said, uh, Robert T. Kiyosaki is a salesman. He says that very prominently, especially towards the end about a certain story with a, uh, a woman journalist that he speaks to. And uh, with that being said, he will try to sell you his uh, board game in this book very much. He would try to sell you the board game. The back of this book even has the board game advertised, which is very interesting. I don't know. I kind of thought that that was a little, um, a little um, underhanded, I suppose. Uh, it made me feel a little bit like take a step back from what it was that he was trying to do but overall i think that there's a lot of information here that you would very much like and uh, i would certainly say go get this book if you're interested there's nothing you could lose except maybe 15 bucks i don't know how much this costs now uh thank you for watching and if you're interested for more book reviews let me know it's Joe Boxer, and uh, if you're interested, please like and subscribe. You have no idea how much that helps me, and have a good day.